In addition to being lost, crypto can be stolen. Crypto is typically stolen in one of three ways. Many people hold their crypto at a place called an exchange. That makes it easier with which to transact with crypto, to buy the crypto, transfer the crypto, or sell the crypto. Sometimes exchanges are hacked. Professionals will figure out the codes, will get into the exchange, and steal the money from the exchange. That's a little bit like robbing a bank. The most important and largest example we have of that kind of a crypto heist today that we know of publicly is at a place called Mt. Gox. Happened a few years ago, it could happen again. The second way that crypto gets stolen is people have accounts at these exchanges. The way you log into the account is typically password-based. If somebody steals your password, it's a little bit like they're getting your credentials at a bank. They can then go to the exchange, they pretend to be you, and they transfer the crypto that sits in your account from your account at the exchange to their account, probably in the Ukraine or Korea or who knows. Now, the exchanges will legitimately say that they have not been hacked. They haven't. It's your account at the exchange that's been hacked. Third, if you don't trust the exchanges, and if instead you keep your code on your own, that code can be stolen too. Piece of paper can be taken. If you've got the code on a thumb drive, the thumb drive can be stolen. If you've got the code on a hard drive of a computer, the computer can be stolen as well. Now here's what's interesting. Because once the transfer happens from your account to that third account, which may be in the Ukraine, Korea, who knows where, it's not coming back. These exchanges are immutable. They're recorded, and as a practical matter, most people, not all people, most people don't know the destination of where the money or the crypto has gone from their account. So as a practical matter, if your crypto is lost, or if your crypto is stolen, you can't go to court. You can't say, this person stole it from me. There is no recourse. And this raises a very interesting and somewhat ironic observation. At a certain level, a large motivation for the creation of much of this crypto economy is distrust in the state. We don't want to have the central bank issue the currency. We don't trust the government. We want to create a system of finance that is extraterritorial in a certain sense. Well, okay, if we have a system that's extraterritorial and exists outside of the government, then the government isn't going to be able to help you if the value that you have is lost or stolen. It's part of the bargain you make here.